All right. Hello, everybody. I'm glad that you could join me today. And thank you, Yuriko, for the wonderful introduction. We um, had a lot of fun at Vogue Knitting January 2020, right before the world closed. It feels like an eternity ago. I don't know about you all watching today. Um, but I'm glad to be here today with all of you and to tell you a little bit more about Rabbits and Robots. Um, so Rabbits and Robots is my brand of knitted toys. Um, I sell toys and patterns and I just started selling some notions that are relevant to knitted toy making. Uh, I'm gonna start off by dropping my web URL in the chat just so you all have it. Um, ooh, let me spell it right. And while I'm talking today, if you have any questions about anything that I mention, um, any of my kits or, you know, techniques for knitting, knitting toys, anything like that, feel free to just uh, drop your questions in the chat and I will try and I'm gonna keep an eye on them and answer them as they come up. But yeah, so I'm Rebecca Olson, Rabbits and Robots is my business. Hello and welcome. Um, first, I wanna tell you a little bit about Rabbits and Robots overall. I'm gonna grab um, my little toys that I left behind me actually. So these are my little mascots. Um, this is the rabbit and this is the robot. And uh, they're the animals that I picked for my knitting business because here at Rabbits and Robots, I love weird and wonderful creatures. And when you get into looking at weird and wonderful creatures, I love random facts and interesting animals from the natural world like rabbits and i'm going to show you a bunch of uh unique and um maybe a little bit lesser known animals today that are all real and also i'm going to show you some animals that are fantasy creatures like robots and other mythical beasts um some of them are my own creations and have little stories and some of them are uh you know based in fantasy and mythology but what i love about real and unreal creatures is the stories that they tell you know for things from the natural world i love just how unique and surprising and interesting and like widely different the creatures in this world are and some of them like you don't hear a lot about them either because they're endangered or just they're things that you don't see in zoos as often and i really like talking about them and sharing um the wonder and excitement with things that do exist and for fantasy animals you know they have stories too but they're stories they're about us like people and what's important to different cultures and different people at different times which is what i love about them so the rabbit and the robot are actually, um, these are free patterns. If you sign up for my newsletter through my website, you'll get um, both of these as patterns to download and knit, which I think is a nice introduction to, um, you know, my knitting techniques and my pattern writing style. So if you haven't signed up yet, go ahead and sign up for the newsletter um, through the link that uh, Yoriko left in the chat. And what I'm going to take you through today mostly is my knitting kits which I do um, sell in addition to patterns. All of my kits are also available as patterns. And then I'm gonna show you my new notions line as well. So the very first toy I'm gonna show you is both a pattern and a kit. And um, it's like an oldie, but a goodie. It's my original, it's like my very first knitting pattern that got me into toy making when I started designing on my own. And this is Snuggly Sloth. So Snuggly Sloth actually, um, I designed when I was working at UCLA, I taught a class there and my teaching assistant really loves sloths. And at the end of the quarter as a way to thank her, I wrote this little sloth pattern and I made her a little sloth. And uh, I loved it so much that I got into writing and publishing patterns from there. So Snuggly Sloth, this is the sloth that you'll make with the kit, a little sample yarn. Snuggly Sloth has um, little magnets in his hands and feet which is one of the things that I love because you know sloths hang out and I think it's really important 
that your little guy can hang out with you. So let me show you, in addition to the toy, what a Rabbits and Robots knitting kit looks like. So here's the Snuggly Sloth knitting kit. And you'll see, um, you know, you can take a look at the colors of the yarn inside of the kit. And you can see on the label, it's got the product name, tells you what's in the kit, what you'll need, um, give you a quick summary. Everything that's in the bag is, it's gonna be a hard copy of your pattern. You're gonna get all the yarn you need. You're gonna get the polyester fiber fill um, and the eyes. And in the case of Snuggly Sloth, you're also going to get laser cut pattern pieces for his little face and hands. And you're also gonna get all the magnets that you need for Snuggly Sloth. So Snuggly Sloth and one of my other kits are the only two that need a little bit extra. Generally speaking for your kits, all you need to bring to it is basic knitting notions. You're gonna need a tapestry needle and some stitch markers and scissors and the needles that you prefer to use for working in small circumferences in the round. For me, I like to use double pointed needles. You can also do magic loop or you can use two short circulars. Most of my kits are size five needles, snuggly sloth included. There's only one that isn't and I'll point it out when we get there. And yeah, so snuggly sloth, like I said, needs one extra thing. And what I recommend for this guy is a little bit of hot glue. And the hot glue is to adhere the, um, the felt pieces to the yarn and to keep the magnets secure under the felt pieces. So you can use instead fabric glue or you can sew it down if you don't have a glue gun. But I really like hot glue for this guy just because once it bonds with the fibers of the yarn, like it's indestructible, it's not coming out ever again, which is really great for especially holding the magnets in place. And one last thing that I wanna show you about the Snuggly Sloth kit is all of my kits have a little badge on the front. And this one says beginner. They're all ranked by skill level. Right now, all of my kits are beginner, intermediate level. You're not gonna find anything too spicy in my kit patterns. If you want some wild things to knit of some of my downloadable PDF patterns are a little bit more advanced. So when you're looking at something like a beginner knitting kit, I what I always say about my kits is they're, they're not kits to teach you how to knit necessarily, but they're kits that are great for maybe your third or fourth knitting project if you're new to knitting, or if you want to learn how to knit small circumferences in the round, which is really important for making toys. And one of the things that I love about toys is because they're such small quick bites, you can pack a lot of new skills into something that you can finish quickly and that you can practice again if you still wanna learn more. But in general, I think Toys are a fantastic way to learn and a really quick, quickly rewarding experience. So this one's a beginner. And when I talk about beginner techniques, what you're going to see in there is like basic increases and decreases, knitting in small circumferences in the round, and eye cord. Those are all the things that I would consider beginner techniques. So snuggly sloth, um, snuggly sloth's arms and legs are all eye cord and the body's knit in the round. He's a really quick knit. I would say from start to finish, two hours to knit this toy. Like I said, I love toys because they're very rewarding. I actually, um, I got into making toys because I love toys and I was making a lot of scarves and hats prior to that. I never wear scarves or hats. Toys that are everywhere. I love them. Snuggly sloth. And let me grab another one to show you. I'm going to show you one of my newer kits. This one I'm pretty excited about. So this one is Baby Possum Trio. So what you'll get in this one is everything you need to make three little possums. I'm gonna show you some possums now. Um, so here's a possum. And you'll have enough yarn and notions in this kit to make three of them. So these guys are also little quick bites. I'd say they take probably about an hour to make each one because they have a lot of color changes. Again, I would say this is a beginner knitting pattern. You're just using increases and decreases to shape and a little bit of eye cord. And you'll get some practice um, picking up stitches in the round. I've been working on building up 
my tutorial section on my website. I have that planned for this year. But one of the things that I have on there right now is a video that shows you how I like to pick up stitches in the round or pick up stitches from 3D objects in the round. Often when you're making toys, as is the case for this guy, the body's already stuffed before you're picking up the legs. And sometimes it can be really challenging to pick up stitches with a knitting needle. So what I like to do instead is just um, pick them up with a tapestry needle and then transfer them to a knitting needle. And I've got a little video on my website that'll show you how to do that. So one of the things about all of my kits is they come with both a hard copy of a pattern and a digital download. So if we flip this kit around, and you can see here's your hard copy of the pattern if you want to start knitting the instant you get your kit like it's ready to go and if you want to download it um, there's a Ravelry download link included so for the case of baby possum trio when you buy this kit it's going to come with the full uh, pattern that's not just for baby possums but it's also for mama possum and let me show you mama possum because when I was talking about uh, spicy patterns earlier She's a, she's a lot of fun, but definitely an advanced pattern. So she and the baby possums come together in a pattern called a uh, possum family. And when you buy the knitting kit, you'll get a download code for possum family. So here she is, she's a wild lady. She's got lots of little teeth because possums have lots of teeth. Did you know that possums have 50 teeth? It's crazy. And also, of course, very important with possums, she has her little people hands. And Mama Possum, uh, she's a jointed toy. She's got really basic uh, joints so that her little leggies can swivel. So she, um, as you know, at least um, I really love possums, so I know a lot about them, but uh, possums carry their young on their backs is kind of like, so funny. I love to look at photos of mama possums because they always look super stressed and just like a mountain of babies like clinging to them while they're going places. So, you know, I think a trio of possums is just about right for the size of mama possums to uh, carry around babies. So start there. If you want to do mama possum, when I'm talking about advanced patterns, if you're curious, she has a lot of short row shaping. This is all done. Um, in short rows. And then of course, just a lot of little parts and a lot of uh, French knots. And the little tiny hands are, um, they're I-cord and in the round and they're using the same basic skills that uh, you would use making uh, gloves or mittens. So if you've ever wanted to try gloves or mittens, but it, or not mittens, excuse me, just gloves because it's the fingers. Uh, if you haven't made gloves before, it's a great way to try it out in a super, super, super tiny version. And if you have, then it'll be a real breeze to knit her up. So for all of my patterns, um, my kits are available on my website and they're also available on Etsy. I'm, I'm slowly working my way off of Etsy so my full range of kits isn't on there right now. So go to rabbitsandrobots.net to see the full range. Uh, my patterns are available on all matter, major pattern retailers. So they're on my own website. They're on Ravelry. They're on Love Knitting. Um, I have some on Makerist as well, and they're on Etsy too. And if you've got any suggestions for other pattern retailers that you like to purchase from, uh, just let me know. I'm always open to being on more platforms for PDF pattern downloads. Uh, my philosophy with that is you know, everybody's got their favorite um, site and there's no reason not to be you know, on every site that you can be. All right, so I'm gonna show you another kit. Um, this one is another one that comes with a little bit extra when you download the PDF. So this is Gladys the B. Um, here's the kit. She's another beginner pattern. I'm gonna show you Gladys now. Super cute. Ah, here she is. So Gladys is part of my big bug bundle. And the big bug bundle, when you uh, download that pattern, has Gladys the bee, 
and Enid the butterfly and Harold the ladybug. Um, this Harold, there he is, he's right behind me on the vase. And uh, we'll talk about Enid in a minute. Um, so your kit for Gladys is gonna have all the materials that you need to make her. And then also come with uh, the full pattern when you download it to knit her friends as well. And one of the things that I really love about Big Bug Bundle is you're using the same technique to make three really cute toys. So once you've finished one, the other two will really be a breeze. The only thing that's gonna be different is um, the wings on the various toys. So that's Gladys. I wanna talk about Enid now because I'm really excited. Enid, I just launched as a pre-order like this morning. You can check her out on my site. So this, this is Enid from Big Bug Bundle. This one is knit, um, she's knit with Cascade Yarns, um, this particular sample that's for the written pattern. You can see she's got these beautiful wings that are a little bit different than Gladys's. So my pre-order that's released today for the Enid kit will be basically just like the Gladys kit. You'll get all of the colors, all of the yarn and the paper pattern to make one butterfly. And you'll also get a digital download for the full big bug bundle. Enid in the kit's gonna be just a little bit different than the sample. She's gonna have like a beautiful dark turquoise blue wings instead of purple, but her body will still be pink. Um, I'm really excited about her. The Enid kits are gonna ship around the 15th, possibly earlier. Whenever I start a new kit, the first thing that I do is um, I use the yarn that'll be in the kits and I knit up the samples so that I can check how much yardage is in there and see what the final product's gonna look like and then photograph it with the kit. So I didn't have time before this show to make my sample of Enid, but she is on the site. Uh, I should mention now, all of my kits are um, $25 USD. Most of them, there are a couple that are a little bit less. So Enid, Gladys, all the ones that I've shown you so far are 25. Right now I have free shipping in the US for any kits. And um, for Canada, I have $8 flat rate shipping. So here's Enid. Um, somebody shot me a message about test knitting. So I just wanted to mention that um, I've been a little bit slower writing patterns this year, but I do have test knitting calls and they come through on my Instagram and uh, my newsletter if I'm organized. So remember when I said uh, sign up for free patterns, you'll also get info on when I'm doing test knitting calls and um, new products. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that as well. I'm at rabbits and robots on Instagram. Okay, Let's see here. Next up, um, I'm gonna show you my other new pattern that launched this week online that I premiered um, a couple weeks ago when I did a trunk show at the Knitting Tree LA. This one, um, people have been really excited about. I, I feel like they're flying off the shelves. Um, it's a, a perennial favorite and it's a, a blue-footed booby. Everybody just, uh, you know, sometimes you want a little, a little buddy, a little side boob, just a little friend to come with you. So blue-footed boobies um, have a super goofy name and they're actually named um, because of the way they walk. They're kind of like a little bit dollaring and off kilter. So the explorers who landed in the Galapagos said they looked like boobies and uh, that name stuck. And their beautiful blue feet are actually used as part of their mating ritual. Male boobies like dance, they do this sort of like high step in wiggle to attract ladies. And uh, the more vibrant the blue, like the healthier the partner. And it, um, it's a very romantic shade of blue. <laughs> They're really cute. Um, the blue footed booby kit. This one's an intermediate and the reason why it's rated that way is because I've got just a little bit of a unique technique to make the toes. It's very manageable, I think, for an advanced beginner or anyone who wants to learn new skills. And uh, you know, for anybody who's a more advanced knitter, of course, as well. 
this one's got um, a bunch of different colors and a bunch of different parts. And one of the things that I thought was really, really important about making blue footed boobies is that in addition to their beautiful blue feet, they always have beautiful yellow eyes. So your blue footed booby kit is gonna come with these special yellow safety eyes so that your booby can be as authentic as possible. Whenever I design toys, you know, I have my own style and silhouettes that I try and convey, but I also really love to keep them closer to the silhouettes and looks of, you know, the real animals and what they look like in the natural world. So boobies have kind of this pear-shaped body and of course the three toes and the blue legs and the little wedge tail. And most important or second most important after the blue feet is the yellow eyes. That's my booby. Again, everything you need is gonna be in there other than basic knitting supplies and your needle. All right, let's see here. What do I wanna show you next? Um, we've done a lot of animals from the natural world. Let's talk about one of my fantasy animals. Let's talk about the slipper monster. So here's the slipper monster. Oh. <laughs> so this guy, um, my friend actually designed the slipper monster as a painting and I thought it was so charming. She had a little story about him. And the story about the slipper monster is that slipper monsters live in your home and they really love to help. But they're very small and they're very slow moving. Like, you know, this is actual size slipper monster, a little tiny guy. So if you ever lose something like a slipper or a sock or a pen, it's probably actually your slipper monster trying to be helpful because your monster is just trying to bring you the sock or a shoe or the pen, but they're really small and everything's really heavy. So, you know, taking a slipper up the stairs is like a two day journey or more. It's like climbing Mount Everest to your slipper monster. So it might take a few days. And if you need both slippers, like that might take a week before you see them again. So your resident slipper monster always is super happy to help and has a super booby grin and a little bit of a crazy overbite, but that's what makes them extra endearing. So this one is my other intermediate pattern right now. And the reason why the slipper monster is an intermediate pattern is because there's just a tiny bit of short row shaping and it's to make this like goofy grin. It's like a little, when you actually knit up the body of the toy, it's a little flap that you fold over and sew into place. If you haven't done short row shaping before, this is a really great way to learn. Um, I remember when I was young and my friend was teaching me to knit, she was really scared about short rows all the time and didn't quite understand how they worked. So it took me a long time to try short rows. And then when I finally did it, I was like, oh, this isn't that bad. Like they're very manageable. So if you've had a fear of them, rest assured, super easy. And a little toy like this is a great way to try it out. So Slipper Monster, of course, uh, is gonna come with all the yarn to make, you know, Goofy Grin, Horned, Tiny Monster. And all of my patterns also include links to tutorials for, you know, things like French knots, or like I mentioned earlier about picking up stitches. Um, some of them I do like a special technique for toes and I've got a video to show you how to make the toes as well. So if you haven't tried French knots before, they're also, um, I think something that always seems way more challenging before you do it. And again, you've got a few on here. It's a great way to learn. So here's your slipper monster. I'm gonna show you the bag too. So you can see, here's the bag. Um, again, an intermediate pattern, but I don't know. I feel like I rate these things pretty generously, I think. Um, my feeling with knitting is just like you'll get there if you try and toys are really small bite-sized ways to try so you can do it you can definitely do it and here's the pattern so i know i've talked a lot about the digital downloads and i mentioned that it's a ravelry digital download i know some people recently have had problems using ravelry ravelry and if that's the case for you um you know if you're just buying a pattern there are plenty of other places for you to buy my patterns that aren't ravelry like a uh, direct from me but if you're buying a kit and you want um, a digital download, but you can't access Ravelry, just go ahead and shoot me a message. Just let me know. You just need to provide um, 
on every paper pattern, you know, there's a Ravelry download code, just send that back to me. And I'm more than happy to email you a digital copy of the pattern for your kit. All right, so the next two toys I'm gonna to show you are a little bit different. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that one of the reasons why I got into knitting toys is because I just love toys. And I do, um, I collected vinyl toys for a long time. And one of the things that they do with vinyl toys, they're like, usually they're the little pop figures and they come in little cardboard boxes that are called blind boxes. And when you buy a toy, sometimes, like when you're buying a blind box toy, you'll know like what the silhouette of the toy is gonna look like, but you're not gonna know what the art is. And um, it's fun, like it's a fun way to collect. Um, I collect a lot of little rabbits uh, from a company called Kid Robot. So I wanted to do my own homage to blind box toys when I was developing my knitting patterns. So I have two uh, kits that I call surprise kits. I'm gonna show you the first one. Uh, this is sea turtle surprise. So what you'll get in this kit is enough materials to make one sea turtle but the surprise is gonna be what color the shell is. So whatever color it'll be, it'll look really nice with the green of the body. You're always gonna get the same green body and the same yellow eyes. Um, but it could be, you know, a wide variety of colors. So here's a purple sea turtle. And I've got, um, I've got a green one here too. So, I like the element of surprise. It's nice to, um, sometimes it's nice to not make, have to make a decision about colors, which is true for all of the kits, but you know, you can make a whole pot of sea turtles that are a little similar, but different. These guys also have the same fancy yellow eyes that the blue footed boobies have. Um, yeah, and again, this one's gonna come with uh, a hard copy of the pattern. And then my second kit, um, it's like double surprise because it's two, it's two toys. Um, so this one is slimy side up. These are another, um, this is a little monster that I made up. Just because they made me smile. I love their little grins. Um, these are two egg yolks. They're little happy egg yolks and when you get two egg yolks and an egg, it's a sign of good luck. So I like to think that you can make one of these for yourself and one for a friend, just whoever makes you smile. And what you'll get in the kit is always the yellow to make two little yellow yolk bodies, but the legs are gonna be a different color. So you'll get two different colors for each leg for your two, two little yolks. So this kit is $20, all the rest are 25. This one's a little bit less expensive. I'm gonna show you some yolks because one of the things I mentioned earlier is the little rabbits and robots toes and these guys, these guys have the toes. So let me, I'm gonna pull these guys to the camera so you can see. So these little yolks have little leggies with uh, three little toes. And um, I think these are a nice touch of detail and they're really easy to make. Um, my goal when designing toys for the most part, or I've got a few goals, one of them is to have it look complicated, but actually be easy. And the second one is to uh, weave in as few ends as possible. So <laughs> always my goals when designing. Um, I always say it's lazy, but I guess it, it's smart too, you know, save your time for other things. So these ones you can actually, if you're ambitious or I don't know, rolling the way that I do, if you watch the video that I have online, it'll show you how to pick up the stitches for both legs using one piece of yarn that you've threaded through the center of the ball so that you don't have any ends to weave in on this, the base of the leg, only at the toes. But these toes are made either with a tapestry needle or a crochet hook, and they're really simple and straightforward, and it's all from the same piece of yarn that makes the legs. So you've got one end to weave in when you're done with it, and it's just a really nice level of detail. So here's one of, one of them. Here's another one. Uh, they're just, they're cute, they're easy. They always make me smile. It's probably about 30 minutes to make one of these, maybe 45 um, if it's, you know, a new pattern. I always feel like the first one's a little slow and then the second one you're really 
picking up pace. And by the third year, you're going as fast as you can go, making a toy. You've got the routine down. All right, so I've shown you my two fantasy animals. I'm going to show you um, next up probably my goofiest real world animal. Um, one of my favorite creatures, like I love possums, and one of my other loves um, is tapirs. So tapirs, here's a tapir. This is Elena, um, and this is Floyd. And they're in a knitting kit called um, Tapir Cousins. And you get a, in your kit, you're gonna get all the yarn and materials to make these two little critters. Um, tapirs are, I always say they look kind of like a cross between um, an elephant and a hippo, but um, they're actually more closely related to horses. And when we're, we were talking about toes earlier, one of the really distinctive things about tapirs is that they have three little toes also. So you're gonna use that same toe technique to make these guys. And they're actually from an order of animals called odd-toed ungulates. And it's not because their toes are funny looking, it's because they have an odd number of toes. So putting the three toes on the tapir was really important for me. And the other thing about uh, tapirs is that they have these little, um, little tiny trunks. They're like, um, not quite an elephant trunk, but a little bit longer than a regular nose. And um, tapirs live mostly in um, South America. Uh, Elena's a Brazilian tapir. Floyd's actually a Malayan tapir. He's from uh, South Asia. But the thing that all tapirs have in common is that they live in um, warmer jungle environments. And one of the things that tapirs do to stay cool is they will like sit in a river and use their noses like little snorkels and just put the top of their nose above water and just sit in the river all day, which cracks me up. I always think that they have snorkel snoops. So I always talk about it. So Floyd and Elena are like my little mini tapirs. And I also have a big tapir pattern if you love them as much as I do. Um, I always feel like uh, the tapir people are few and proud, <laughs> but I want more people to love tapirs. They're so amazing. World Tapir Day was, um, it was the 27th, so it was really exciting to see a lot of tapir art pop up on Instagram this week. And uh, my bigger tapir is called uh, Haywood. So all three of them are actually named from 2001 A Space Odyssey. It's the only film that features tapirs. There should certainly be more, but at least there's one. Um, 2001 has a uh, Brazilian tapirs. You can tell because they've got like little mohawks on the backs of their necks. Um, but Floyd and Haywood are Milan tapirs because uh, that color combo is so cute. I always like to say, or I like to say because it's true, uh, tapirs look like this because um, they're meant to look like rocks dappled by sunlight to protect them from predators. I'm going to grab Haywood. He's on the shelf behind me just to show you what he looks like. So he's a little bit bigger. Um, I always like to say you can buy them. If you go to my website, you can get both patterns together for a little bit of a discount. Um, it's a tapir, tapir trio bundle. Um, I always like to say that these guys are just the right size to be baby tapirs, though um, in truth, baby tapirs have these really cute little stripes. They, they call them watermelon markings. Um, it's very cute if you head to my Instagram and scroll back a little bit um, to the day after World Tapir Day. I've got a post of a mama and baby tapir and they're really, they're just something else. They're so funny. They, um, they lose the stripes as they grow up. Um, but all of them have it, you know, whether it's a Malayan tapir or a, a South American tapir, all of the babies have the little watermelon markings and it's just the sweetest thing. So um, here's the kit, just so you can see it. Like I said, you're gonna get everything you need to make both tapirs. And again, like I would say this is a beginner pattern, it's not, any different a skill set from the other beginner patterns that I've shown you, which are things like Gladys the Bee and Enid, Enid, Enid the Butterfly and Snuggly Sloth. 
they're all um, very straightforward, you know, working in the round and small circumferences, and then basic increase and decrease and a little bit of picking up stitches. So all very manageable if you've got, um, you know, someone who's learning how to knit that wants to do something different, or if that's you, or if you just like toys, of course. Um, I always like to think uh, that toys are great gifts too because they're so quick to make. If you need a last minute gift, you know, you can make a toy in an afternoon and it's very sweet. And the other thing with toys, you know, I have all my kits. If you don't want to hunt down safety eyes and fiber fill and all of those things, they're ready to go. But if you do like to make a lot of toys and you have that stuff on hand, or even if you're new to it, toys are a great way to use up the little bits and bobs that you have from other larger projects. I know I've been making a lot of sweaters lately and I keep ending up with these little balls of yarn that um, you know, aren't really big enough to make a garment with um, unless you wanna collect a lot of them and do like a scrap sweater, but they're always, they're always enough to make at least one sort of toy. So the last kit that I have ready to go, I've got one more pre-order to show you after that. So the last kit that I have ready to go, I feel like is the ultimate like, scrap buster, super satisfying, quick project. If you just want to get the pattern or if you want to buy the kit and start out that way and then realize that they're awesome and easy to make a million, this one's for you. So this one is Tiny Octopus Trio. So this kit is also $20. Um, at the beginning, I mentioned there were two kits that needed a little bit extra. One was heavily sloth and needed hot glue. This one, I also recommend hot glue. It's because I have these little wiggle eyes. You know, I like the wiggle eyes. I think they're super goofy. If you're not a fan of wiggle eyes, you can easily embroider eyes on instead. Okay. Let me show you these tiny octopuses. They all come um, they're like in a beautiful tropical sea colors. So the kit comes with yarn to make a purple one. And like a, an aquamarine one. And an orange one. So this toy I actually developed uh, as part of a relationship with a company called Artomat. And Artomat sells um, art through vintage cigarette machines that have been converted um, like basically to look cool and to sell art. But the constraint of that format is everything that you make has to be the size of a pack of cigarettes. So these guys are super teeny tiny so that they will fit in a little box the size of a pack of cigarettes. Um, I don't sell them with Artemat anymore, but I do uh, have them on my site for adoption if you wanted a pre-made one. But like I said, they're really easy to make. Um, these are probably about 20 to 25 minutes to finish one. And these guys, um, they're my one kit that's knit with a fingering weight yarn. I recommend fingering weight yarn and size three needles for these. Um, but if you're just buying the pattern and you want to stash bust, you know, toys are great for scaling up and scaling down whatever weight yarn you have. You just want to pick a needle size that's a few sizes smaller. Like if you're working with worsted weight yarn, you might typically knit um, on eights to make a sweater. For toys, you're going to knit on fives. Most of my toys are with worsted weight yarn. So with fingering weight yarn, um, you're usually not doing quite so loose and knit, so threes are good for that. Um, and yeah, all of these guys are made really quickly, cast on and find off for the little leggies, and a really fast and rewarding project. I, I'm realizing I didn't talk about uh, the types of yarn I like to use for my kits, and normally I do that. Uh, these guys, Tiny Octopus Trio is made with wool yarn. I know people have allergies to wool, so I want to make sure I mention it. Um, and the rest of my kits are made with acrylic yarn. I'm going to grab the closest acrylic guy and hold him up for you. And when it comes to toy making, I really like acrylic yarn because generally I think that toys are going to kids. And if your toy is going to a kid and they're going to love it a lot and be carrying it with them all the time, you want something that's really easy care. So. Acrylic's really durable. It's really easy to wash. You don't have to worry about it shrinking. And it comes in a lot of really beautiful, bright, fun colors, which is another thing I love. So that's 
why I'm using acrylic for most of my kits. And the little tiny guys are on wool because, um, you know, when you talk about fingering weight yarn, you're generally talking about making socks and acrylic socks aren't a thing that anybody's making particularly. So wool is a lot easier to find for fingering weight yarn. Um, I'm going to show you now. I don't have a kit yet, but this is my other pre-order that I launched today. And it's another really unique and weird animal from the natural world. Um, a little bit easier to find than tapirs, I think. And this is Augie the axolotl. So here's Augie. Axolotls are a type of amphibian. They're what's known as a neotenic salamander, which basically means they, they're like the, um, they could become a salamander, but they don't go through metamorphosis. They stay as these like little water creatures that still have gills and they spend their lives underwater. So when you see these beautiful pink fronds on the side of an axolotl's face, those are actually its gills and they help it to breathe underwater. Axolotls come in two colors, um, beautiful pink, which is what you see here and also what the kit's gonna be. And they also are black. And like, this is the only two colors they come in, which is just total opposites. It's pretty funny. You've got your uh, super peppy axolotl and your super goth one. So um, yeah, ax axolotls are native to Mexico, but you'll actually find them a lot in the US because a lot of people have them as pets. And they're super cute, especially because every single one has a really charming little grin. So I had to make sure that was part of the pattern for Augie. Okay. I'm very excited for um, Augie to be a kit and to see uh, more axolotls out there. I've noticed that uh, I've seen a lot more of them in the past year in pop culture and I'm always excited when any of my like strange and wonderful creatures make it big. So I'm rooting for Augie and for axolotls everywhere to really uh, blow up as a cultural icon in 2021. So Augie's kit will also be um, $25. And again, you can pre-order that today on my website and they'll ship uh, by the 15th. I've just got to, like I mentioned with Ina the butterfly, I need to knit a test sample and then actually make the kits for these. So Augie will be similar, but a slightly different shade of pink when he comes to you in a couple of weeks. Uh, Laura mentioned that she left the octopus behind me. Thank you. So when I was talking about different gauges and sizing up and down your toys, that's the same pattern as these little tiny guys. It's just um, two strands of super bulky weight yarn held together and those are on size 32 needles. So if you wanna make a really giant toy, uh, you can. When Yoriko was mentioning uh, the really giant sloth that I had at Home Knitting Live, I made that the same way. You know, I um, just scaled up the, uh, the felt parts of my pattern for that one, you know, for that one or some of my other toys that do have felt pieces, it's very easy to enlarge or shrink them on a copier. And that's what I've done whenever I've scaled up or down my toys. We've got a little bit of time left. Uh, if anybody has questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. I've shown you all of my toys. I keep forgetting, but I've got another really exciting new section of my shop that I just launched that I want to show you. Um, and then I'll talk about some of my other patterns but I'm really excited to show you my notions. I just launched a little notion section of my shop because I know um, when you're making toys and when you're making a lot of toys, you need eyes, you need a lot of eyes. And you know, I obviously, I'm a collector, but every time I go into a craft store, if they have safety eyes, I buy whatever um, color they have there. I just, sometimes I use them and sometimes I've had them in a box for like five years waiting for the right moment but it's part of crafting, right? It's like collecting buttons. Um, Heather's asking, how do I choose the names for my animals? Um, just sort of whatever comes to me. You'll notice that some of them don't have names because I wasn't doing that initially when I launched the patterns. And then at some point in time, I decided to. I, sometimes I like alliteration. Sometimes I go for that. Sometimes like with the big bug bundle, it's like, oh, I want names that sound like grandma names. I think that'll be cute. So. Gladys was the first one that came to me and I picked Enid because it fit. And then the ladybug, um, I went with Harold though for that one. I 
funny. I did a survey to see what other people might like. Um, they wound up going with Harold because they liked it. Some of the other ones, um, Clancy Jr., the shark behind me, um, he's got a fun name to his story. So I'll tell you that one before I show you my notion. Um, years ago, I had one of those giant sharks from Ikea and I named it Clancy, but you know, those sharks are like five feet long. Um, when I moved, I couldn't take him with me anymore. So Clancy, you know, went to a wonderful new home and Clancy Jr. was the shark toy that I designed. It's a little bit smaller scale, um, like, you know, small size shark, Clancy Jr. And that's, a, that's my shark pattern. Uh, Clancy Jr. you'll see behind me is knit on, um, he's knit on super bulky weight yarn and size like 10 and a half or 11 needles. So that one's like, you get a big guy really fast, which is another thing that I love about toys. Just super rewarding. Um, I'm designing patterns now that are a little bit larger with um, worsted weight yarn, but in general, my feeling is if I want a bigger toy, um, I can work with a bigger yarn and still have an equally fast knitting experience that's equally you know, detailed and expressive. So Clancy Jr., super fast. He's got a little bit of a short row shaping in his jaw, but otherwise very easy knit. Okay, let me show you some safety eyes. It's like, it's a bag of eyes. So we'll talk about them more than we'll look at them. So I've got three different sizes of safety eyes for you right now. And what I tried to do, because I know when I'm making toys, like I said, I need a lot of eyes. I'm making them all the time is, um, all of my eyes are gonna be the same price point And I've given you like as many eyes as I can for that price. So this one is a dozen pairs of six millimeter safety eyes. And six millimeter, um, nine millimeter the other ones that I carry are the ones that um, I use for most of my toys so if you get these like and you want to download any of my patterns it's going to take you a long way so six millimeter let me show you just show you once you can get a sense of scale um, my tapirs have six millimeter eyes and so do most of the small things snuggly sloth um who is the other one the uh, possums, the baby possums. So these come up a lot. And then I've also got, like I mentioned, nine millimeter eyes. And it's it's eight pairs of nine millimeter eyes. And these these two sizes are gonna take you through most of the rabbits and robots patterns. And so this one, nine millimeter. Um, who else is nine millimeter eyes? My little robot. Uh, the other thing about these safety eyes is I like the ones, um, you can see they've got these little brown washers. I prefer this kind of safety eye. I know some of the ones like the ones you might buy at Joann's have um, the white plastic backing and those are a little bit more firm. But what I found, especially with the tiny sizes like six millimeter is like, they're nearly impossible to put on and like, man, they hurt your hands. I remember like back in the day, I'd be working with the eyes that I got from Joann's and I would be like basically tearful using a pair of pliers to like ratchet the washer onto the back of this eye. Um, and it's really nice to not have to do that. Like it was so hard and then you'd still have to do the second eye and like all of your fingers were hurt. Um, if you do have those types of plastic washers, the really thick ones and you're using them, you can heat them up a little bit, like in a little bit of hot water for, I don't know, like 15 seconds and make them soft. And that'll be a little bit easier to put them on. I didn't know that at the time. And uh, I've since found these other eyes with the different washers that I like using a little bit better. Uh, Carolyn's asking if that's a unicorn on the top shelf behind me. It's a horse, but I do want to make it into a unicorn. It's on my to-do list to publish a pattern from this one. And what I'd really love to do is have like a horse unicorn Pegasus bundle. I think that would be really cute. I'm really excited about it. It's just, it's going a little slower toy designing this year than I was expecting. But, you know, follow me on Instagram and sign up for my newsletter. And as my new patterns get released, you'll hear about them from me. All right, and my third size of eyes that I'm gonna show you. Um, so these are 15 millimeter cat eyes. When we talk about safety eyes, um, 
there are a few different styles if you've ever wondered. Generally speaking, um, when you talk about safety eyes, you're gonna hear animal eyes and animal eyes are either gonna be solid black, like most of the ones that I'm selling, or they're gonna be the ones with a round pupil in the center. So if you see one of my patterns and it says, you know, nine millimeter yellow animal safety eyes, this is what I'm talking about, the round ones. And then the other type of eyes are cat eyes. Let me see if I can, uh... so they've got, you know, that ovular pupil like you'd find in a cat. So I've got a lot of cat eyes. These are actually, um, I used to make plush toys, uh, sewn toys before I got into knitting toys. I was doing both at the same time for a while. So these ones are a, a collection that I have from back then. And this is three sets of 15 millimeter cat eyes. They come in three different colors. So in this kit, you'll get, let me pull them up so you can see. You'll get blue and green and a pair of gold eyes. And all of my eyes are $6 a bag, $6 USD. So these ones are great for Clancy Jr. Um, up behind me, he definitely uses cat eyes. And then also, if you want to get real crazy and fancy with your slipper monster, a uh, slipper monster uses 15 millimeter eyes also. And um, I've got another fantasy pattern coming out probably in the next month or two. I'm like going slowly designing it. And that one will also use uh, the fancy cat eyes. Um, let's see here. I've got one more notion to show you for right now. I'm figuring out how much I'm gonna expand my notion store this year. I've been thinking about like project bags. So project bags, you know, or something that you're excited about, like drop me a line and let me know. Small ones, I guess, like notions bags. I've got a lot of fun prints from, like actually from when I lived in Japan and I did a lot of fabric shopping there. So like bears and bunnies and just all sorts of cute things. Cause I, I love the cute things. Um, but my last set of notions is um, knitting needle protectors. So these are to go on the tips of your knitting needles. And uh, man, I didn't even know about knitting needle protectors until this year. And I wish I had known about them sooner. They would have saved me so much woe in the past. So these are great because you just stick them on the ends of your needles when your project is in transit. So you don't have to worry about your stitches falling off. But you know, when you're working in the round, like for toys, you've got a ton of knitting needles. So when you order a set of needle protectors from me, you'll get you'll get three sets. So you can um, cap off three, three double pointed needles so you won't lose any stitches while you're working. So you'll get three little sets of heart needle protectors. They're just the cutest. I was so excited when I found these. I was like, oh, I love them. I hope everyone else does too. And these will work. Um, They'll work with knitting needles about size four to size 10 to 11. Um, I think it's gonna depend on your particular brand of needle. And I would say like how um, tapered the point is. And also, I don't know how chunky the knitting needles are. I, I knit all of my stuff with the Takumi bamboo needles, the double pointed ones. And I've noticed they're a little bit thicker than most of the needles on the market. So, for me, you know, these these will work on my size three double pointed needles for Takumi, but I think if it was a different brand, they'd be a little bit too big. Yeah, I'm really excited about these. It's nine dollars for your set of three stitch markers. And again, um, when you're ordering from me today, all U.S. shipping is free and Canadian shipping is going to be eight dollars flat rate. And I will be swinging by the post office later today and again on Monday. So if you do order something pretty early today or over the weekend, I will have them out to you pretty fast. All right, we've got about 15 minutes left. Showing you all of my kits. Let me know if there's anything you wanna see again or if you have any other questions. Um, and I'm just gonna show you some of my other patterns while we do this. And I can also show you Oh my goodness, I'm so nervous, but I think I can show you um, the one that's been in progress. I'm nervous because it's been like a secret and I've been teasing it on Instagram, but uh, I'll show it to you guys today. So let's start with that one. Um, 
it's another fantasy animal. This one's going to be another like two fur. So when you buy the pattern, you're going to be able to make two different animals from it. Right now I have most of one done and it doesn't have a face and um, its head might be a little bit too teeny tiny. So uh, we'll talk about it. Um, I'm excited for you to see it. It's a little Frankenstein, so forgive me. Um, it is, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you a bit first. So it's got a wing, it's a winged fantasy creature. And this one is like, it's a big toy. It's a real big cuddler. And I'm excited for that too. Um, so here we go. Oh, this guy's gigantic. I'm gonna show you the leggies. So this is gonna be a little hippogriff and it's gonna be a hippogriff and griffin two pack. Um, you know, I don't have the cool parts to show you which would be like the face, but here we go. We'll eventually have a beak and probably, like I said, I think those fancy 15 millimeter cat eyes are gonna be just the right size. So big, I can't even fit them all on the zoom screen. Here, we'll lean back. And then the legs will go on there and I'll, this one will have a little horse tail. And then for the griffin, it'll have different front paws. So it'll have little lion's feet and then it'll have a little lion's tail. So I'm really excited for this one. When I mentioned that, um, it's so sad without a head. I'm really curious. So when I design things, sometimes it works the first time and sometimes it doesn't. And I end up re knitting things. I can't tell yet. This guy's head might be a little bit too small. I have to finish the beak and the ears and see what he's looking like. But the feet look great. Um, when I was mentioning that I used to make uh, plush toys before, this one, this was one that actually started as a sewing pattern that I designed. And I would sell toys at craft fairs and I would sell. Um, plush hippogriff toys and I wound up just retiring the pattern because I stopped sewing toys. I got into knitting toys instead and designing toys. It's been a lot more freeing as a designer to just be able to design for you to make as opposed to designing something that I was going to sell as a finished object because when you're designing for a finished object to sell you're really constrained by how long it's going to take you to knit it and when you're just designing patterns um, you can let go of all those constraints. You can make something as detailed or as large or as small as you want. And I really embrace that. And I think Rabbits and Robots has bloomed a lot since I made that decision. But I'm really, really excited to get to revisit uh, that hippogriff pattern because it was one that I always really liked. And if you're curious about what the final toy is gonna look like now that I've let you in on my secret and I haven't, I haven't said anything to anybody else on Instagram yet, but you can scroll back through my Instagram posts and you'll find some samples from when I was selling uh, plush hippogriffs. All right, so that's my hippogriff. And let me show you a few others that are available just as patterns. Um, some like oldies but goodies. Let's see here. I'm gonna grab Francis also. So this is Peanut Butter the Elephant. She's another one that's worsted weight yarn, size five needles, you know, nine millimeter safety eyes. She's got, um, her trunk is actually designed with pipe cleaners inside so that it's posable. And again, I think she's a pretty straightforward knit if you are looking into learning more toy knitting skills. And she's a, she's a pattern download. And again, oh, she's one of my bigger toys. They're getting bigger as time goes on. So she takes a little bit longer to knit, but all very straightforward. Let's see here, who else do I have? Um, this is Francis. They're my walrus. Francis has a little bit of loop stitch, which always like covers up their little face. It makes it kind of hard to see, but I love walruses. Did you know that, um, Walrus tusks are kind of like multi-purpose tools. They use them for a bunch of different things. But my favorite is that they use them like, they use their tusks like grappling hooks to help pull themselves out of the water when they're coming up back onto the ice. So Francis, like I said, Francis is an oldie but a goodie. Francis is probably the third or fourth pattern that I released. 
and uh, they've always been near and dear to my heart and come all the come all the loops down cute little face so yeah if you want to learn loop stitch um i i learned it for this pattern let me tell you i am not patient with the loop stitch this is about four rows of it and about as many rows of it as i would want to knit but it's a really nice effect and it looks really cute and it should be used judiciously unless you have the patience of a saint, which I don't. So. And the last one I'm gonna show you is uh, one of my free patterns, actually. I've got a few different free patterns and um, the best place to find those is Ravelry. I also have links to them on my personal site. But if you, again, if you have problems with Ravelry, just shoot me an email and let me know. This one, um, so this is one of my garden sprites, and this one is actually published on Notion. So Ravelry is just going to point you back to Notion's magazine. And they're little, um, fierce little warriors that live in your garden. So they're a type of sprite. And they're very uh, pro-protecting plants and anti-litter. And they'll get very fierce if you're like not picking up your trash. You know, they look cute if they've got little spears and they'll poke at your feet and tell you pick up your litter and in general, just help to keep your garden bloom. So this one is a little daisy. And um, here I'll show you the front. This is side view of these guys. They're like, I feel like their little faces are set in the middle of their bodies. And in addition to the daisy, I have a little rose too. So here's the little rose. So for these two actually, Again, you can make these with scrap yarn. These toys are very small. I would recommend wool yarn for these just because it's really important to um, to block the petals for these. Remember when I said I'm a little bit of a lazy knitter? Um, I don't always, I rarely block my toys unless they need to be blocked for a variety of reasons. Um, again, toys are like meant to be held and played with and easily loved. Um, but the biggest thing with toy dolls is you're not really like you're not really worried about gauge with them. You don't really need to worry about knitting gauge, meeting gauge ever when you make them. And oftentimes when you're knitting them, you're you're stuffing them as you go. And with all of my patterns, you know, I give you directions that are basically like, you know, start stuffing your toy now so that you're never going to get to the end and realize that you should have done it. But Oftentimes they're pre-stuffed and it doesn't make sense to block something that's already full of uh, polyester fiber fill. So if I'm telling you to block something, it's only because it's absolutely necessary. Um, so for these guys, blocking the petals really helps to put the curl in these guys and also for the daisy petals to help them keep them flat. And again, acrylic doesn't block as well as wool. So this is one where I would recommend wool or another natural fiber. Uh, Adrian said she loved my toys and the ladybug would be have been really easy and fun to knit. Thank you. Adrian makes uh, beautiful dolls and she's participating also. Oh my goodness. Thank you guys for all of the compliments. Mandy Moore from Red Island Fiber. I'm sure is another vendor this week too. Check out the, I'm sure you've checked out the Fiber Love Affair website if you're here, but make sure that you have. I think I've, I think I've covered most everybody who's on the shelves. So yeah, I've got 11 kits right now, which is really exciting. Like so, so many kits in the past two months, it's really exciting to be launching um, four of them. Oh, thank you. Um, Mandy says she can't wait for the unicorn. It, it will be coming. I'm not quite sure when I'm, I'm going slow this year. I've taken a little bit of time to do some knitting for myself. But yeah, please, um, I'm going to drop my website links again so that you have them. I'm probably going to make them not links, but we'll try. So again, if you pop on over to my site, you'll find my kits, my patterns, all of my patterns everywhere that they're sold are instant downloads. So if you just want to get started knitting right away, that's the way to go. Um, kits, of course, you got to wait a little bit till they get to you, but they're going to have it all the pieces that you'll need. 
And then on my personal website, I also have my notions and um, I have some original art for sale also, which is gonna be little adoption kits for tiny octopuses and slightly larger octopuses. And I've got a selection of sloths and other, other creatures there too. And so sign up for my newsletter there. You know, you'll get info and you'll also get the free pattern. And then I'm most active on Instagram. So come and find me there too. I'm at rabbits and robots. And if you're looking for me on other platforms that I mentioned, I'm also gonna be rabbits and robots on those. So you can search for me as rabbits and robots on Etsy or on Ravelry um, and love knitting. I feel like I'm forgetting another platform that I vend on. I've got a few patterns on Makerist, but not as many as I have elsewhere. Really for the full collection, you know, come direct to me to my website. And okay, I think those are the major links. Thank you everybody for joining me here today. I'm really glad that we uh, got the time to talk. If you ever have any questions, you know, I've got a contact form on my website and just go ahead and fill it out. Oh, Yorick is asking for my bingo word. My bingo word is sloth. And so many sloths, rabbits and robots started with sloths and we'll end with sloths too. And what, what a perfect bingo word, so sloth.